We were at the uh, CCP meeting room here at E3 and we caught up with Torfi to find out just what's going on with EVE right now. What, what's the state of EVE at the moment? Well, the state of EVE is pretty good. Uh, EVE, we just recently celebrated its ninth birthday, so it's been going on for nine years. It feels forever, uh, but uh, I think we're in a fairly unique situation in terms of MMOs is that we have been growing, our player base has been growing constantly year on year for each year of its history. We, we, we haven't like uh, gone into decline or, or shrinking, we actually keep, keep growing. And uh, this year is a very exciting year for us. Both we are making a lot of improvements and iterations to EVE, uh, the, the game as we know it today. We're making improving a lot of old existing systems and augmenting it and polishing it and making it look visually more cool. Uh, but we're also going to expand uh, later this year into uh, Dust 514, connecting EVE and Dust 514. So finally, we're going to have an EVE universe. Rather than the game EVE Online, we are, are building the EVE universe into which EVE games connect, N most notably now EVE Online and Dust 514. So that's a very exciting moment for us. And, uh you, you went through a period where there was a lot of sort of, it felt a little bit shaky and, and the player base was in uproar, or at least very vocal players were in, in uproar. Yeah. But it seems like things have settled a little bit now and, and you're sort of in a more sort of comfortable place. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, all through the history of Eevee, even before the game came out, uh, I remember uh, like two years before it came out, we had forums, you know, and we had a very active community. People are uh, very engaged and, and, and it's more than just a game for them. And uh, uh, I think part of our success, and the fact that we have been growing for nine years consecutively, is that we maintain a very good relationship to our players, in general. We, we, we engage them on our forums, uh, we have an annual fan fest where over a thousand players fly to Reykjavik to, for like a three days of keynotes and meetings and round tables and so on. And we have a demo democratically elected government of players, the Council of Stellar Management, 14 players that get, elect get elected twice a year by players in, in like open elections, open and free elections. Uh, that represent them and, and they come to the Iceland office actually twice a year or, or three times counting FanFest and, and engage in conversation with us and I think through that connection we are able to like evolve and iterate on the game uh, in the way that the players want to. Now there have been ups and downs in this relationship, it's kind of like a, a marriage and, and, and uh, I think uh, we were like, uh, you know, a distant spouse, you know, that didn't really listen and didn't really talk for a while. Uh, which made us, uh, our strategy wasn't fully aligned with what our players wanted to do. Uh, so, so basically we had a, a moment last year where the players were really frustrated with a lot of things that they felt were coming out and uh, other things that they were concerned that we might be starting to think about and uh, basically rioted in game. And, 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 and kind of put a stop to trading in, in one of our uh, biggest trade hubs. But it goes to show, I think, with the passion, uh, the passion that the players have towards the game, is that their demonstrations and their act of like anchor was done within the game. It, show, it goes to show how seriously they, they take the game. And um, eventually we listened <laughs> to uh, them, basically, and we, and we flew in the Council of Terror Management for uh, meetings and, and discussions. We did reorganization within our own company and uh, we changed our tactics and focus and, and we're uh, focusing more, uh, our, most of our resources now on the core mechanics and core gameplay of EVE, which is basically about internet spaceships. Mm. And uh, we've done two expansions since then. One uh, this uh, winter called Crucible and the second one Inferno, which just came out. And both of them have been very well received with our community. And uh, so I, I think most of the hard feelings that we were encountered last year are, are kind of, you know, under the, under the bridge, so to say. At least, at least uh, we think uh, that the relationship with our players is very good at this moment and they're fairly happy with what's coming out.
And, and what's coming up is, is this huge thing that's going to be dust when that sort of marriages with, you're talking about a marriage with the players, here's a marriage of games. Yeah. Um, and you also, it seems like you're thinking about adding perhaps even more to the universe at some point. Yeah, by, so, so when we decided to, to connect us to EVE, it sounds simple when you say it, but actually it, it, it provided to be, uh, like came out, turned out to be a fairly complex technical uh, exercise. Mm. Uh, and we had to really kind of tear apart and make some changes to the way that our servers work to open them up to the fact that uh, uh, a client connecting to it wasn't necessarily a PC client, you know, uh, which should be able to access some services, but still not hackable and secure and, and, and so on. And, and all everything has to happen in real time. Just like in Dust, you may have seen the demo where uh, you're, you're in, in Dust and you kind of get stuck at an impasse and you're able to order in an airstrike so that in EVE somebody like sees the planet and sees the request for the airstrike and he swoops in and he can actually like bombard down to the planet of dust which immediately sees the lasers tearing down through the sky and, and, and shattering the enemy. So that's a very, that's a very, that's a real time, it's not like an asynchronous, it's a very real time synchronous uh, connection. However, since we've built this architecture, since we've done this, we can actually do this on more platforms. So, uh, so yeah, in a, in a long-term roadmap, and I'm not promising this like this year or anything like that, we're looking at things like mobile and tablet and, and, and just all kinds of different platforms that connect to the EVE universe where everybody plays together in some shared manner. However, EVE online itself lends, it well, lends itself very well to PC, the user interface and so on is kind of very PC oriented. So we're not going to be porting like EVE as it stands to like console or, or tablet or something like that. But now we have the opportunity to allow people to like all interact, kind of, it's kind of like different windows into the same universe. One window is EVE online, another window is Dust, and, and then we might add another win uh, more windows as we move on. And what, what's interesting is that it sort of opens up the universe to different kinds of players as well. With, with kinds of, even though I think there's going to be a lot of e-players playing Dust, mm -hmm. there's also going to be a lot of new players coming in and seeing the universe for the first time. That's right, that's right. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why it is on console. A lot of people ask, why is it on console? Why isn't it like a PC shooter? Uh, and one of the reasons is that there's a massive audience out there that plays shooters on consoles and, 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 they, and they love sci-fi and they want to be part of something big and something deep and immersive just like EVE is. Uh, and uh, this is a, uh, and, and by, by providing Dust on, on a console that's, that's a way for us to open the world up for, uh, to them. So uh, you spoke of the, the most recent expansions. Uh, and of course, dust is coming. But what, what's what's next for Eve, and what are you? What what's your what's your plans for the next expansions on e on Eve? Well, uh, like with most game game companies, it's not completely public, and and we're all kind of really deciding. But for now, the theme uh, is very much on war. It's it's on destruction. It's about fighting. It's on PvP and uh, and and. Uh, and iteration as well. Uh, we, we kind of made a promise to our players that, uh, that in the short term we would focus on iterating on existing systems, which is hugely important, tremendously important when you are building a product to last, is to constantly be like fixing and replacing. It's just like running a city. You know, you can't just build a road and then leave it for 50 years. You're, you're <coughs> and, and you see, you can, but it's not a, not a good idea. Exactly. I mean, you see this if you're in an old European city. Half the city is like under construction in the summer. They're fixing this road and they're fixing this cathedral and they're fixing this. And you and you have to be doing this. You have to be doing this just to maintain it. Same thing when you have a, a software product, any software product, especially a game, which is supposed to be like fresh and cool. And that's why Eve is as a little bit like a human body. You know, when you get born, uh, like the the dude got born that was born, I don't know how old you are, but some years ago. A lot of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's probably not a single cell or very few cells out of that particular baby still in you today. Like they've, they've replaced themselves. In the same way, Eve, we've replaced like the source code for a networking code, uh, the game logic. We've upgraded the graphics, uh, updated the character creator, and, and of course added features. But, but we've replaced them and that's hugely important is to always take a look at your systems with different game systems and ask, okay, what is this being used for? Is it still relevant? Is this still a good idea? However, just like with uh, managing a city, even if our development team, even though our development team is uh, th kind of three or four times larger than it was when we launched EVE, it's a, it's a massive development team, 
there are so many features, so we have to focus on what we are iterating on, on at any given time. And that's kind of the biggest part of our decision-making process is to figure out, okay, what part of our game should we be focusing on iterating and fixing? Like, right, uh, and, and that's where the community comes in. You know, that's where we engage the community and we talk to the Council of Stellar Management, we talk to people on forums and, and look on Twitter what they're saying or Facebook or wherever, and, 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 and we kind of we get a signal from that. Uh, so, so now in Inferno, we iterated on two major, or like three major systems. One of them was the missile graphics. So the missile graphics weren't cool enough, we felt. We, we felt that this was like 2012 and, and things should look cinematic and awesome and badass and look like a final scene from like Battlestar Galactica or something like that. And we like set out, how can we make our missiles look like that? And, and, and created new models of our like missile launchers, the missiles themselves, and smoke and explosions and so on. So, so that's where we're kind of upgrading it visually. Uh, then we upgraded two war systems. One uh, which is called Factional Warfare, where you can hook up with the NPC uh, factions in game and, and fight their wars. It's a system we introduced like four years ago, but it was sorely requiring iteration because it didn't. No, it wasn't really meaningful. Even if I won a battle or I won over a system, it didn't really mean anything. It was just a name. So, so we added meaning to it. So now, if you win, win a solar system, you can actually go and upgrade it using your the points that you accrue, and and make it better for you. So you have like uh, lower taxes there. You've got cheaper access to services, and most importantly, you can deny access to like docking rights to your enemies in that solar system. Uh, so, so, so capturing a system really has meaning, and, and, and EVE is all about meaningful gameplay. And the second system that we iterated on was, was our war declaration system. So in EVE you don't have guilds, you have corporations. You build a corporation and the corporation is a group of players. And corporations then, then can go into war with, with each other, they declare war on each other. And if uh, I am at war with you, we can fight out our wars even in the high security zones without being attacked by the police, because it's not a griefing or aggression, we are at war. However, that system was really uh, uh, requiring iteration, so we, so we took out the, kind of the uh, biggest pain points in that, the user interface, the reporting on the progression of the war, and we also added a feature where, where you, if I, if I declare war on you, you can actually hire mercenaries to like help defend yourself. So now evil PvP corps declaring war on uh, like a, some Care Bear Mining Corporation uh, have to think twice because the Care Bear Mining Corporation may be massively rich because they're mining and they make a lot of money and they hire just a bunch of mercenaries and, and really like fight back. So, so, so that's kind of cool and interesting. So it's been nine years. I hope the best for you for the next nine years mm -hmm. and perhaps even further. There's no end date for EVE Online, but thank you no. very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.